All right, the next steps on the CFA are to do a full validity and reliability check, then CMB, and then we'll do some model fit, and then impute some factor scores. Let's do it. Now, for the validity and reliability check, I have a new tool for you. If you don't have it, please go to the StatWiki homepage, and it's the top resource, Excel Stat Tools. This will have the exact same name as the previous one, except you'll notice in this one, let me go open mine, that the Validity Master now has a new look and also a place for variances table. There are a few other differences, um, but this is the main one we will be concerned with today. So make sure you have this version um, as it accurately estimates AVE, whereas the old one was really, really close, but not exact. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is go back to our not grouped model. So go back to our initial model and go to the output and estimates and scalars and correlations. We're going to left click out here, then right click and then left click copy. That's going to give us the correlations table. And that's what we need to paste into A2 right here. Boom. Into F2, we need the standardized regression rates table, not the regression rates table, but the standardized one. Paste that in here. And then the new thing is the variances table. Again, before I was just estimating these, this time I'm actually using them. Paste that in here. If this doesn't work for you when you press the button, make sure you look over these caveats and assumptions. They are critical. And if you don't abide by them, it likely won't work. Uh, I have written very, very bad code um, just to make sure it works when you're following these assumptions. Okay, click. And excellent. Woohoo! There's even a problem. Yes! Love it when there are problems because then I get to explain things. Um, so what this does is it takes all those values, it restructures it, calculates the composite reliability, the AVE, average variance extracted, MSV and ASV, that's maximum and average shared variance, and then puts the square root of the AVE on the diagonal in bold, and then the correlations in the correlation matrix, and then it will highlight if there are any problems. So, and it'll even tell you what those problems are. So the square root of the AVE, this one right here, for information acquisition is actually less than one of the correlations. And it turns out it's this one. So 0.732 is less than 0.749. We knew the information acquisition and decision quality had a discriminant validity issue. So this is a problem we need to fix. Now this is the same problem we have here. The maximum shared variance is 561, which is more than the APE. That is a problem. Um, so we need to fix that. How do we fix that? One way you could do this, probably the harder way, would be to go look at these here. This is the less accurate way. Let me zoom in over here. Let's scroll down. Here we go. Decision quality and information acquisition. These are our problems. You see we have a very high correlation. And this one has low loadings. Now, you may recall from before um, that information acquisition 5 um, had a low loading, it still has a low loading. We could try just deleting this one and seeing if that would um, fix it by increasing the AVE. Now that's one way to do it, except that's addressing convergent validity. Uh, the other way to do it would be to go run an EFA one more time with just the remaining items and to see where the biggest cross loadings are. That would be probably the more accurate way, but we'll try both. So let me down arrow this, X. We're gonna get rid of that last one there and run it. Probably better to have saved first, but we already did save, so we're good. If I up arrow this, look, this went down just slightly. That's good. And these stayed high. I bet we're fine. Uh, let's go test it. That's the beauty of having this automated tool is you can just test things super quick. Correlations table. Reset. There we go. Paste that in there. Standardized regression weights. Back before these tools, this took a very long time. So you would not just go willy-nilly test a bunch of them. You'd fix things and then run it. Run it. Hey, it actually worked. That fixed it all. Um, and so we're, we're good right there if we wanted to just call it good. Now, again, the other way would have been to go do an EFA with just those items. Let me go back here. Just the decision quality items showing up here and here plus five. Um, and seeing which one had the greatest cross-loading and then deleting that one. Uh, but this worked fine enough. And the loadings look great, convergent and discriminant. So we're good. I'm going to call it good. Okay. That's awesome. So what do I report now? 
I report this table right here. I would just copy this, paste it into my Word document, and say we have convergent validity as evidenced by the ABE all above 0.5. We have reliability as evidenced by the CR all above 0.7. These CRs are actually fabulous. Um, we have discriminant validity based on the square root of the ABE being greater than any interfactor correlation on this matrix. Oh, whoops, don't move it. And so we're good. That's great. Okay, next. Go here. We did validity and reliability. Next is common method bias. Okay, if you have a marker variable, that's ideal. That's something like social desirability bias. I don't have that in this data set, but the way you would do that is include it as an additional latent variable. Uh, I suppose I should have kept those other <laughs> those other items, and so we could have used a marker variable, um, even if it wasn't a good marker variable. But I don't. So here we go. Uh, we're going to do it with the CLF. In Amos, I have a new plugin for this. I just showed you um, where to get that. It's up here in resources. CLF plugin. That was there before, but I've updated it to do some new stuff. Here is the new stuff it can do. Let me select all and oh, down arrow this. Move it all over just a little bit. Okay. To do the method bias, you need to create a new latent factor in here and then make sure it is selected. It needs to turn blue with your mouse not on it. When your mouse is on it, it's red. But when your mouse is not on it, it should be blue. If it's not blue, click on it with a single pointer finger. Then go to Plugins, Common Latent Factor. Bada boom. It names the factor, gives it a variance of 1, and connects to all observed items. What we're going to do is different from what we've done in the past. We're going to test whether the shared variance across all these items is significantly different from 0. And the way we'll do that is by doing a chi-squared difference test between the unconstrained model and a model where all these paths are constrained to zero. So let's do that. I'm going to save this one more time, run this, proceed, hopefully it runs, hit the up arrow, and I'm just going to look at this chi-squared degrees of freedom. So 887.5 and 507. Let's go ahead and deal with those in the stats tools package. Go to the chi-squared difference tab and Put in those numbers. I'm just going to pull this over here. There we go. 8875 in the unconstrained, 887.5. And then in degrees of freedom, we have 507. And now let's fully constrain this. Okay, this is cool. So in the new plugin, down arrow, X, in the new plugin, if you name this latent factor yourself, so let me go ahead and name it, double click it, and call it CLF. It must be capital CLF, no spaces, just like that. If it's already named, then the same plugin will... Ah, it says you need to select this variable, so let's select it. There we go. Uh, then the same variable, or the same plugin, will constrain all the paths to zero this time. There we are. They're all constrained to zero this time. And that is because we named the CLF before running this plugin. Whereas the first time around, you don't name the, the CLF and it names it for you. Okay, run this, proceed, and we have a new chi-square degrees of freedom. We'll stick in. This is 1018.8, 1018.8. I can already tell you this is going to be different. And 542, there we go. It is substantially different from zero, um, as evidenced by the p-value here. So, that's unfortunate. Darn. Um, what this means is that we do have a lot of shared variants. So what we'll do is we'll use the unconstrained um, method factor and we'll leave it in as we um, impute factor scores or as we move on to a causal model. Because we're leaving it in, I will definitely impute instead of um, using the full latent model. Because if I leave it in like this, it's going to be terribly messy and complicated. So, what do you do next? Hit the down. Well, first thing you do is you report this in your paper, right? You say, um, we did a common method bias test where we um, compared the unconstrained common method factor model to the fully constrained, zero constrained um, 
common method factor model. And in the chi-squared test, it came out to be uh, significant. Here are the difference in degrees of freedom, or difference of chi-squared and difference in degrees of freedom, and um, the p-value. And so we had uh, significant shared variance, which led us to retain the CLF, or CMF if you want to call it that, uh, just when you're using my plugin, make sure you call it CLF. And uh, that's it. And then you're going to leave it in when you impute factor scores, um, but not constrained to zero. So let's get rid of this. Oh, let me get rid of you. It's turned red. No. <laughs> All right. When something turns red like that, it's been uh, deactivated in Amos. What can you do? Save. Close. Reopen. There it is. It's no longer red. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it now that I can, and I'm going to do this one more time. Put in a CLF. Don't name it, but do select it. So it's blue, plugins, common latent factor, and boom, there it is. I'm going to run this, proceed. I'm going to hit the up arrow. I want to see if there are any major issues standardized here, any major issues in the model. I'm looking at these regression weights. They're looking mostly okay. Joy is kind of a problem. Everything else looks fine. If I go look at joy, um, I'm going to look at the output actually. Um, estimates. Here we go. Go to joy. You can see if we go down to the standardized regression weights, we have some lower values here. Joy uh, 5, 6, and 7 have really decreased. And that's because they share a lot of variance with everything else. Apparently, joy permeates the reason or the sort of the driver behind a lot of these variables. So, what can I do about it? I zoom in here to joy. Well, let me down arrow this. One thing I could do is I can move this constraint around and see if that changes anything. Let me try that. Double click, change this, get rid of that one, put the one here instead, and run it. Up arrow. Now it's just crazy. Look at all those negatives. That's awful. Urgh. Okay, so what could I do next? Well, I can figure out which item is really the problem. Here's what I'm guessing. We have this covariance between 6 and 7. I bet if I got rid of one of those items, we would be fine. So, let's do that. I'm going to get rid of 7. See, up arrow that. Yeah, down arrow. Okay, I'm going to get rid of 7 because it's fairly redundant. And run this one more time. Proceed. Up arrow, still a problem, but let me go move that constraint around again. Instead of having it here, let's put it back to where it was. One, run, proceed. And that didn't help a lot. Pfft, darn. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, so what we have now is um, what we call common method bias corrected measures. So when we impute factor scores for these by creating a single variable to represent joy or playful, um, it will those new variables will account for the shared variance that's explained by the common latent factor. And so we will have what are called common method bias corrected measures. So let's do that. I'm actually going to revert back to that old model, CFA, CMB, um, no, I don't want to save the changes because that has Joy 7 still in it. There we go. Um, oh, but it has those constrained. I'll fix that. Okay, we're back to where we were. So, that's that. We have common method bias. We've reported it. The next thing is, we're down here, final measurement model fit. Now, oof, we have the CLF in here. So, do we do model fit with the method factor present? The answer is yes, you can. So if I run this, proceed, and look at the output, you'll see the modification, sorry, the model fit is actually not terrible. You have CFI of 0.964, 
and P close of 970, which is great, RMCA 0 0.045. These are very similar values to what we had before. Um, and so this is what I would report. Those values plus the SRMR. And then, of course, your chi-square and your degrees of freedom. And that's that. Model fit, done. And CFA, done, except imputing factor scores. So now let's impute those factor scores. Again, why am I going to do this? Because I'm retaining the CLF. When you retain the CLF, if I were to use the fully latent model to do my structural model, I would have to keep all of this mess in here as I'm drawing regression lines between my IVs and my DVs. Instead, what I'm going to do is analyze data imputation, and that's going to create a factor score that um, will result in just one, two, three, four, five, six variables, additional variables, actually seven, because it's going to create one for the CLF, but we won't use that because these ones already account for the shared variance explained by the CLF. So let's do that. Data imputation, uh, proceed. It has to run it first. And then it says, well, what do you want to call it file? And by default, it will call it underscore C of whatever you had. Um, and that is fine. Um, actually, I'm going to change the name to, let's see, SEM series underscore C. There we go save okay and impute it's been imputed um, and then hit okay okay it now exists we have finished our cfa